For the first time in India's history, a commercial bank has slashed the savings deposit rate. And it's not any other bank. It's India's largest bank, State Bank of India. It has cut the interest rate on savings deposits below 1 crore rupees by 50 basis points from 4% to 3.5%. What does this mean for India's financial system? Will other banks have to follow suit? Where does this leave the Monetary Policy Committee, which is set to meet tomorrow uh, if the big bank has already called uh, something? Hello and welcome to this special show on SBI's Big Cut. I'm Lata Venkatesh, and joining me to discuss this historic rate cut is Usha Thorat, former Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India, Mr. R.K. Tucker, the Managing Director and CEO of Yuko Bank, Siddharth Sanyal, the Economist at Barclays India, and Sanjeev Basin, uh, the Vice President at IIFL. But before we begin that discussion, here's first uh, the Managing Director of State Bank of India, Rajneesh Kumar, who gave the reasons uh, behind the savings deposit rate cut earlier today. Interest rate uh, being so high, uh, there was no choice for the bank but to bring down the savings bank interest rate. We have been cutting the term deposit rates, but uh, we were watching uh, uh, for a right time. And the other consideration was that when MCLR, we brought down by 90 basis point, Hmm. We had a lot of inflow of funds uh, during the demortization in savings account. Okay. So either the uh, choice before the bank was either to raise the MCLR or uh, reduce the savings bank interest rate. So that's why we uh, thought that uh, real interest rate being so high. So there is a case for uh, bringing down the savings bank interest rate. All right. Uh, that's uh, SBI's uh, reasoning. Uh, they explained very clearly that they had a large amount of low-cost deposits in January when they cut uh, uh, the MCLR by 90 basis points. But 60% of that extra money that came in November, December has since uh, moved out of the bank. And therefore, even to maintain the MCLR or what you can call their benchmark rate, uh, they will have to bring down or they have to increase the MCLR. And uh, under current circumstances, obviously, bond markets being what they are, they can't afford to hike rates, and hence this cut in savings deposit. Uh, well, uh, 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 Mrs. Sushat Thorat, uh, uh, deputy Ma the former Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India, has joined us, uh, as are other guests. But uh, uh, first to you, Mrs. Thorat, uh, what would you say is the reason? Is it an acceptance that there is a, uh, a long-term dipping of inflation? No, undoubtedly, Lata, there has been uh, dipping, especially of the CPI inflation, which is the uh, the figure that is being looked at. Mm. Plus, if you look at the system, there has been an underlying surplus liquidity, and RBI has been in a liquidity uh, absorption mode for a significantly long time. And if you actually look at the data on money supply, you will find that uh, demand deposits with banks have actually increased by 25.7% year on year this year compared to 99 last year. So overall, everyone knows that there has been a huge surge of liquidity in the system. And credit appetite and offtake has not been very significant. And there's been a huge amount of investments in government securities, and the yields have been dipping. So from purely from an asset liability management point of view, it does uh, you know, make sense uh, when this is the one rate that has been uh, you know, there at uh, you know, this rate. Of course, in periods of higher inflation, this uh, savings bank rate was, all, was one yes. thought negative. And uh, now, definitely, it's positive because we've seen the retail inflation at the yep. lowest ever. Mm. But it's, uh, the, the thing is that this is really, you know, like almost preempting... Uh, action from the, the reserve the reserve. yes it does make the reserve bank's action a little difficult because the biggest bank has already said that i'm moving my biggest uh, rate uh, or the biggest basket of funds uh, to a lower cost uh, but uh, you know there is also the stock market angle mrs thorat uh, uh, growth has not picked up which is why sbi is cutting rates there are no takers for uh, high cost money and uh, there is exuberance in the markets, uh, if you please. We are touching new highs on all indices. Nifty Bank, Nifty, so Sensex. liquidity, both from domestic liquidity sources and also for overseas liquidity. Absolutely. So there's been a huge surge of liquidity, and this is naturally, rather than you know finding its way into the bond markets, which mm. yields are dipping to mm. new lows every day. Mm. Except for those people who are already sitting on a bond. Uh, yeah. So, so I yeah. know. I just wanted to know how would a central banker think. Would the Reserve Bank worry that it should not be a cheerleader no, no, the and therefore the not cut? Or should it have to just follow the market and cut? See, 
when you look at interest rates, interest rates from the point of view of growth and output, it, it is one thing. But if it's going to lead to an increase in asset inflation, which it surely will, mm. means you have to deal use other kind of macro prudential instruments such mm. as uh, risk weights and okay. you know margins on uh, loan to value ratios okay. or margins on uh, loans against uh, property, loans against shares, those kind of things. Yeah, I remember when you all were deputy governor, Especially and I think Dr. Reddy was governor. Yes, but one doesn't know whether the loans against shares have really phased a new high or whether the okay. bank's exposure to the capital markets has significantly increased. Mm. Because ultimately, whatever you do, you do it in, in the banking system. But okay. the system is getting funds from the outside, you yes. know, from the mutual funds and from the overseas. So yeah. it's only limited amount that RBI can only control the commercial banking exposure to the capital markets. Fair point. Uh, well, uh, Mrs. Thorat, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining us all the way from London with your reactions. Uh, uh, just to complete that point, uh, uh, in 2004, the Reserve Bank had raised the risk weights on capital market exposure of uh, banks uh, when it uh, thought that uh, the uh, stock, stock market was receiving too much money from uh, uh, banking and other sources. But anyway, we, it remains to be seen how the uh, current Reserve Bank will react. Uh, uh, let's get uh, Mr. T uh, uh, Tucker the uh, CEO of uh, Yuko Bank. Uh, Mr. Tucker, uh, uh, good, after good evening to you. SBI has cut rates. What's your reaction? Uh, should we expect banks like yours also to follow? Uh, see, I think uh, it is a step in the right direction. And uh, what I feel, it was uh, uh, long overdue. And uh, especially if you really see, even when the deposit rates were high at even 8.5 uh, to 9 percent, uh, the saving rate was at 4 percent, and now the uh, term deposit rates have come down to uh, say 6.5 to 7 percent. Uh, so the difference between the savings and the term has gone down. Uh, so uh, it was, I think, uh, something which was uh, bound to happen. Mm. And SBI, I think, has taken a step in the right direction. No, so do you expect all banks to follow suit? I mean, will you cut rate? Will you cut the savings rate, for instance? Yeah, we are working on it mm. because it will help us in uh, bringing down our uh, cost of deposit, and accordingly, we can pass on the benefit of uh, further reduction in the MCLR also. So, but don't you think that? Uh, all your savings uh, account guys will now use sweep accounts and move the remaining money to fixed deposits or something like that? Uh, no. Uh, if you really see uh, 50 basis point uh, difference as a done by State Bank of India, uh, see uh, many accounts are already on that, uh, what we call it, any uh, sweep deposit or a flexi deposit. So they're already having that benefit. Uh, and uh, most of the people who are maintaining the savings account I think uh, 50 basis point may not uh, affect uh, to that extent. Yeah, some extent, yes, I agree. There could be people uh, putting uh, say more money in the sweep deposit. But uh, that should not be, I think, more than uh, 10 to 15 percent. So uh, that should uh, not affect, give us so much of, uh, like, uh, hit in the terms of increasing our cost. But the, that reduction, what we will get? from the entire portfolio, because normally any bank's portfolio is around 35% of the total deposits. Uh, so that would definitely bring a good impact in reducing the cost of deposit. Exactly. So if 35% of your money is uh, uh, in savings deposits, you are saying 10 to 15%. So does the savings deposit pool fall to 30% or 25 No, no, no. Uh, it could be a, uh, a maximum difference of, I think, uh, uh, one to two okay. percent max. Okay. Okay. Uh, please stay on, uh, Mr. Tucker. Uh, let me get our other guests in as well. Uh, Siddharth Sanyal uh, uh, of uh, the Economist from Barclays is with us. Siddharth, uh, what is actually SBI acknowledging here? Is it acknowledging low growth? Is it acknowledging that long-term inflation is low? And can RBI afford to ignore the reality of a big bank moving its savings deposit lower? 
Uh, it's a it's it's a very interesting move, no doubt. As you mentioned earlier, that the, there has not been uh, uh, there has been technically uh, relaxation on the savings interest rate setting for a very long time, but nobody had really ventured into that. Uh, so far as SBI's move today is concerned, I would think that this is a this is a combination of various factors. One is possibly uh, inflation on a longer term trajectory. They are expecting it to be somewhat lower for a for a significantly long period of time. Expecting the 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 policy rates to be lower, expecting generally more money into the financial savings pool in general. And that's why being able to, rather than in money going into financial, uh, physical savings or money staying under the mattress, it's possibly coming to the banking system and, and, uh, and, and into financial savings for a more durable basis. Uh, and that way they might still be uh, able to attract a, a decent chunk of money. Uh, and that might be one indication. But in, in, in the process, it will possibly be uh, one step closer towards more f- flexibility mm. into the overall interest rate spectrum for a, for a, uh, f- on, on a very, very sustainable basis. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, Sanjeev Basin uh, uh, has also been patiently waiting by. Uh, Sanjeev, from a market point of view, the exuberance was obvious today. Uh, the Nifty Bank was bid up, SBI was bid up because their cost of money will fall. Uh, but uh, uh, what is your sense? Can this play out for a little longer? Are we going to see, therefore, real estate companies, borrowers, all of them also benefiting? Yeah, I will. Rata, it has a three-pronged effect. One, uh, <clears throat> our, uh, SBI has been the first to bell the car. Well, the cat, and we know we have been in a low inflation, falling bond yield scenario for the last two years. On the back that oil prices, government deficit, and rupee now touching almost a three-year low, all are giving you a lot of comfort. Now, uh, it also signals that credit is not picking up at all, and that is evident from deposits and lending. So lending rates going higher is out of the question. RBI is now going to look for how lending rates can be cut. And, and since that is not possible, there was a total mismatch on the asset liability side. Mm. And uh, I think RBI, has, uh, State Bank has taken the, uh, you know, slight bit of a risk, but they are sure that they will be able to retain a large part of the deposit. Mm. Also, Lata, it tells you that, uh, you know, the, the so-called widow's income, which is a fixed deposit returns mm. over year over year, which have been in a higher trajectory, are now definitely headed lower. And that money is rightly or wrongly is already you have seen the amount of SIPs into equity, mutual funds and all being at a record pace, Mm. I think that should only be uh, very, very positive for that. Mm. In the short run, I think it's uh, it's the precursor to the RBI policy. Mm. And uh, we think that going ahead, uh, this would be the last, you know, positive as far as the market goes because it would have fully priced in everything. Mm. And uh, we think the cost of competition on the retail side is definitely going to see lower margins in the short term for some some of the banks. Yeah, that's true. But uh, Sanjeev, look at it this way. Uh, I mean, from the Reserve Bank's point of view, uh, you are yourself saying that SBI is cut because nobody is taking the money. There is no growth. And yet the market is at all-time highs. Uh, Would not the Reserve Bank sound like a cheerleader now if it cuts? I mean, I'm just wondering if that is a thought that the Reserve Bank has to consider. Correct. You've summed it up well now. I mean, RBI is now should be tantamount that the more the liquidity is coming, Mm. it is not helping the cause of rates being lower because credit is not expanding. It's not that RBI is not willing to pass, but that retail uh, space has become so competitive, whether it's a MFI or an NBFC or or a PSU bank or a private bank that credit is not expanding and rates are coming lower. Mm. So yes, it should, uh, it should be a, you know, a thought process for something for the RBI governor to ponder over in the next two days. Okay. Uh, well, gentlemen, uh, we have to take a break. Uh, uh, Siddharth, Sanjeev and Mr. Tucker do stay on. We are coming back in a jiffy to discuss the seminal move from uh, the country's biggest bank, the State Bank of India.